Right here you see the remains of uh, two clean deer. Got some bits and pieces of it spread around the yard. I've got a bunch more I'll be saving for later. I know several hunters and uh, they donate the parts of their kills that they don't uh, use to uh, my dog so all of them can get utilized and uh, you're going to see some of that here. This is going to be another one of my pack feedings that I use to help develop a pack, uh, healthy pack hierarchy. I hope you enjoy it. Right here you see some of the dogs now picking through it. Son just let the two puppies out. Uh, if he wants to go inside, you can let him inside. For those who will ask, where's Magi? Well, Magi's in heat right now, so she can't be out with everyone. Right here with the camel collar is Puko. The bulldog is Wrecker. It's Puko's brother, K-Bar, with the stars and stripes collar. Lobo's over there snacking on a piece. He's a long-coated shepherd. And here's uh, Kurgan. Kurgan's a blue bay shepherd. He turns four years old in a couple weeks. Actually, a week. Both Kbar, Kuko, and Ulu are uh, lichen shepherds. Curious to see what they end up doing with those heads. I've never given them deer heads before. I have the feeling they'll probably be out here for a while. Utilized as chew toys. As I discuss in all my videos, I like to pet and handle my dogs when, I, when they're eating. Pretends things like food aggression. In that uh, video series I have about food aggression, uh, one of those very aggressive puppies was this dog here. You can see now as an adult, he is totally fine being touched. He has no issues at all. He's even uh, enjoying it. <laughs> as a former animal warden, uh, I can tell you that's very important, especially if you have children. It prevents things like bites over food. You liking your venison, little man? It's K bar. Chewing on a leg here.
Kurgan telling uh, K Bar that's his piece. No, that's not aggression, that's all healthy back communication. That's how they talk to each other. That's a big mass of frozen bits. Again, I was given uh, two whole deer carcasses after they've been cleaned. It's just uh, an example that you can have several unmute neutered males together and have them all get along. I've got a total of five here in the yard. There's only one female and that's Ulu. And you can see in the pack setting they all get along. Now this is what a standard meal looks like for my dogs. This is what I call a pack feeding exercise. I use these to allow the dogs to develop and maintain a healthy pack hierarchy amongst them. It uh, allows the dogs to set their own pecking order, and uh, I'm here to uh, step in if that needs to happen. I find that this helps prevent things like fights. Telling the puppy that's his piece. For those who will ask, yes, my dogs all live in the house. We're all outside together filming this video for you. So uh, I don't want any snowflakes out there uh, telling me I'm an evil bastard because my dogs are outside uh, enjoying this beautiful meal. You'd be surprised the stuff people think they have the right to say to you in the comments. I just shake my head. Do you honestly think I care what the opinion is of somebody I don't know online? If you do, I've got a bridge I'd like to sell you. <laughs> I'm a former animal warden. Was one for almost two decades. I've bred, raised, trained, and rescued dogs for over 30 years. I, I, I don't need your advice when it comes to this kind of stuff, and I don't want it. If I do, I'll, I'll solicit that. If you'd like to learn more about how to feed a raw diet, I've left you plenty of links in the video description below, several from vets, including a book from a well-known vet, Dr. Ian Billinghurst, uh, called uh, Give Your Dog a Bone and Grow Your Dogs with Bones. They'll teach you the proper way to implement the BARF diet. BARF is an acronym for Biologically Appropriate Raw Foods. For those who will say, I thought uh, bones were dangerous for dogs. That's only raw. Uh, that's only cooked bones. Raw bones are 100% uh, safe. 
Jurgen's uh, amassed a couple of heads and a carcass there to eat for himself. <laughs> him telling Wrecker to leave his head alone. Wrecker's got all kinds of stuff there he can chew. Mr. Pook man. This is Pooko. He is a massive 80 uh, pounds at uh, six and a half months old if you can believe that. His brother K-Bar is 52 pounds at six and a half months old. Zulu, their mom. You see, Puko's going to be big like his dad, Kurgan. Kurgan stands 32 inches at the shoulders and in lean athletic condition weighs 120 pounds. Again, this is a yard full of five unneutered males all getting along. It's all in how you raise and socialize your dogs. K-Bar moving in saying, I want that leg. Again, that was a little pack communication you saw there. Kurgan's moving back and telling Puko that's his. Puko go off with that head or if he's going to stab him. Yeah, it looks like he says, nah, that's my head. You got those pieces behind you. <laughs> that's K-Bar up there. and telling Wrecker, no, that's his pile of food. And Wrecker, you can see, tail down, defers to Kurgan's authority and goes back to the big chunk of meat he has right here. Telling the puppy he's in his space that that's his piece. Again, this this isn't aggression. This is all healthy canine communication. It would be a mistake for me to step in there and say something. <laughs> Kbar trying to steal some of Dad's food. Kurgan let him have that. He's running away with his deer head. That was pretty cute. Director telling Puko that that's his piece. Again, these are all unneutered males.
record chewing on a big chunk of spine there. Kurgan's got a rib cage and some spine. Puko over there working on the head. Or should I say K bar? There's Puko. Some of dad's food, and dad's saying no. There's plenty of stuff around the yard. We're gonna have fun playing over with these heads over the next couple of days and chewing on them. Now, these deer have been frozen for a couple of months. I uh, got them from my mailman fellow paratrooper thank you buddy again uh, I know several hunters and uh, they all give me the parts of their kills that they don't use it allows all of their kills to be utilized none of it wasted which I think is uh, ethically the best thing to do if you're hunting Lobo. Again, Wrecker's an unneutered male bulldog out with several other unneutered males eating food with no issues. Eating a high value raw food with no issues. Again, it's all in how you raise and socialize your dogs. Telling uh, K Bar there not to get too close to his food. Ulu just took Lobo's uh, roast. <laughs> uh, if Lobo really wanted to, he could have stopped it. These guys all ate uh, not too long ago, so they're probably pretty satiated. Again, this is a pack building exercise and not their normal meal. We use these to, uh, as stated, develop and maintain a healthy pack hierarchy.
massive cuckoo right there. Got Ulu getting some love from me. Really? <laughs> Telling uh, K Bar that's his food. Again, this is all normal fact communication. He's got blood all over the snow now. <laughs> record telling uh, K Bar that's his piece. Again, there's no aggression here. All healthy pack communication. Still in K-Bar now. Again, if you'd like to learn more about how to feed a raw diet, I've provided plenty of links down in the video description from vets and other resources that'll tell you all you need to know if you want to learn more. How much to feed, what to feed, when to feed, why to feed. It's all there. It was Ulu Tone Wrecker, that's her piece. Ah! 
Knock it off. So again, that's all healthy pack communication. There's no blood in there. What may look violent and mean is just dogs communicating. Again, had that been a real fight, you would have seen dogs biting, grabbing, shaking each other. There would have been bloodshed. What you saw there was a, a little canine bitching. A little, that's my piece, get your own. That, that, that's all it was. And that's what I'm trying to show you here. Again, records from a fighting breed. And you saw there, he handled that situation very well because I spend a lot of time doing these kind of exercises with them. And that transfers over to their off-leash behavior when I'm down at the park. And you see in the hundreds of videos that I have of my dogs off-leash how well they deal with dogs that are aggressive out in the field when we're, when we're running around. The reason why they're able to deal with that is they've uh, developed good uh, canine communication skills and they understand what that is, what real aggression is, and what's just a dog being scared because it doesn't understand what my dogs understand, which is how to communicate amongst other dogs in a healthy fashion. Again, you look at Wrecker. Absolutely no blood on his head. Again, because there there was no biting. That that's all mock mock biting. When you see them putting the other dog's muzzle in their mouth, that's a sign of submission. Got Mr. Puko over here. Again, six months old, 80 pounds, if you can believe it. saw there was Kurgan disciplining Wrecker for trying to take K-Bar's food. Again, it's just a lot of bitching. It sounds fierce, but it's not a fight. It's just the dogs talking to each other. It's Kurgan as the alpha of my pack, letting the other dogs know what's acceptable within the pack. Now when I say Kurgan is the alpha of the pack, I don't need somebody in the comments saying, well, you should be the alpha. Well, yes, ultimately I am the alpha. I'm, I'm talking about amongst the dogs. Oh boy. Yeah. Oops, I accidentally hit stop. That's Kurgan coming up to me now to get uh, acceptance. I'm letting him know that everything he did was okay. Cracker. Let him have his food. That's Kurgan punctuating my command. He's not hurting Wrecker. He's just telling him to listen. And you can see Wrecker right now has a submissive posture. Over there, uh, Lulu's giving him a little love. Now that's Puko making a submissive noise. Kurgan was telling him that was his piece. Again, what these exercises do is they allow the dogs to develop a healthy pack hierarchy and develop a pecking order amongst themselves so that I don't have fights 
problems with fights later on. All these things are worked out amongst them in their own language. It's when people step in and frustrate these natural communications that you end up creating situations later on that fester and develop into huge fights. I don't have that issue here because again, I allow this to happen. And all, as I said before, all this behavior then transfers over to their off-leash behavior when I have them off-leash and they're encountering dogs that aren't friendly. Well, they're going to be out here for another few hours. If uh, I wanted to wait until they were done chewing stuff, I'm starting to get a little chilly. I think I'm going to let everybody in for a little while and uh, let them out a little later to have some more. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and share, and hit that notification bell down below. You'll get email notifications when my new videos come out. I've got over 1,500 videos on the channel covering a variety of topics involving my dogs. I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers I've been getting over the last month. I've gotten over uh, 10,000 new subscribers. Welcome to my channel. Thanks to everybody who's been there along the way. Bye. From me, the Rec Man, Mr. Lobo, Ulu, Kurgan, Puko behind them, and uh, K-Bar. See ya.